Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca from DevourDinner.com. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm excited to be here today. I hope you are too. Happy Sunday. Let's get this party started. As you join in, please say hello. Let me know where you're from and let's get all the technical difficulties out of the way before we dive into this recipe because we need to get that done, right? So when you hop on, if you'll let me know, can you hear me okay? We're also going to check and make sure that we are live both on Facebook and on YouTube as well. So if you're joining in on YouTube, welcome. Go ahead and ask your questions. I'll see those questions in the chat box when you join in. I'm getting a couple of thumbs up, so I'm hoping that's because you can hear me. Hi, Amy. Amy is from the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners group. Welcome. She is the um, admin over at that group and we are so grateful for the support of the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners. If you're joining me from that group, I'm Rebecca from DevourDinner.com where I focus on easy to make recipes for busy families using common ingredients. I like to call it pantry food. Um, the, the ingredients that we have in our pantries to make nice flavorful meals at home and I do focus a lot of re my recipes on the Instant Pot as well as the air fryer and other methods of cooking as well. Oh, there's some faces. Michelle says, hear you loud and clear. Kathy, hello from Florida. Hello, Peggy. Checking in from Arkansas. Doreen says, we can hear you wonderfully. Oh, perfect, perfect. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna drop over in the comments a link to the recipe that we're working on today. It is a very simple, very easy summer pasta salad. Now you know, all summer long, I love and enjoy cold pasta salads. They're perfect for um, like potlucks, barbecues, family reunions, when you're gathering at the park, all the things. So if you stick around and you listen to all of this, I'm gonna give you tips and tricks along the way for when I have taken this pasta salad on the road with me, and then I throw it all together when I get to the location. A lot of times that happens for family reunions and you need to bring a potluck dish. This is one of those that's wonderful. It's also great to use leftover rotisserie chicken. You could use some shredded canned chicken or if you grilled the night before and you have extra chicken, chop that chicken up because we're gonna use it in this recipe. So to get started, we're gonna cook some pasta. Now I'm going for the fun spiral pasta rotini. You can cook the whole box. You can cut this recipe in half. It does not matter. Doesn't matter. So we're gonna put it in. I think I'm gonna hold out just a little bit of it. Not much, almost the full pot. And then you're going to cover the pasta with liquid. So I think I have got my top down working today. Yep, look, it's focusing today. I don't know what happened last week. And I'm just gonna pour in water. Now you could also do this with like chicken broth so that you can get some additional flavor from the pasta as well. You wanna make sure that this pasta is good and covered. So this recipe is different than some of the others because we're gonna drain the excess liquid out. And that's why I'm not measuring it when I put it in to begin with. Some recipes, we're adding in other ingredients and we're never draining the pasta. And then it makes a huge difference the amount of liquid that you're using to cook that pasta. In this case, we will be rinsing and draining our pasta. So the goal is to make sure that that pasta is good and covered, all right? Go ahead and make sure that pressure valve in the back is in the closed and locked position and we are going to set it to five minutes. So go ahead and use your plus and minus keys to adjust the front to five minutes. And then it's going to take just a few minutes. We're gonna hear that beep. Of course, the beep is telling us that the pressure cooker has accepted those readings and it's going to start heating that bottom element. As that bottom element gets hot, it will bring that water to a boil, and as it comes to a boil, it will create steam, steam will create pressure, and pressure will seal off the back pressure valve. It's as simple as that to cook pasta. Now, you can of course cook this on your stove. No big deal, right? Why do I love to do it in the pressure cooker? A lot of times I get questions asked of, 
You could do this on the stove. You could do these recipes many, many ways. And you're right, you can. But for me as a busy mom, and I know so many of you at home are busy parents, it's so helpful to set it, forget it, and walk away, right? I'm hearing a lot of amens out there, I'm sure. That's why cooking pasta in the Instant Pot is just simple and easy. I don't have to worry about it boiling over. I don't have to watch it. It's just simple that way. Now I can work on the other ingredients. So some of you at home are cooking right along with me. Right now is when you should be chopping up some of these other ingredients. So let me get this out of the way and we're gonna talk about those other ingredients. We'll get that off to the side. So this recipe, we're going to use some whole kernel corn. You wanna rinse and drain the corn. We're gonna use some beans. Now I'm using black beans today. You could use kidney beans, pinto beans, navy beans, whatever, but rinse and drain your beans. Then we're gonna use some diced up chicken. So a couple of cups of diced up chicken. I'm using a rotisserie chicken. Now, if you've ever bought a rotisserie chicken from Costco or Sam's Club, you know that those rotisserie chickens are giant, much bigger than what you can get at your grocery store or at Walmart. There's plenty of extra chicken on those rotisserie chickens that you can use for other meals. And that's what I'm doing today. Chop it up into bite-sized pieces that we're gonna throw into this recipe. Then, we're gonna use a bunch of green onions. So wash, peel the outer side of it, of those little bulbs, and then we're gonna dice and chop those up just to be a little bit of green onion. And finally, we've got a tomato. So this is a Roma tomato. Dice that up into small pieces. We'll be adding that to our salad as well. And then some cheese. Now, typically I use grated cheese. Um, you can buy the pre-grated cheese, you can grate yourself. But today, I've actually, I'm using cubed cheese. So I've taken a block of mild cheddar um, cheese and I have just cubed it up into these nice little pieces that I'm gonna throw into this pasta salad. For our sauce, we're gonna be using some barbecue. So choose your favorite barbecue sauce along with some sour cream. And then we're gonna use some ranch seasoning that we're gonna mix together. That's really the recipe. So if you're traveling to a family reunion Cook the pasta, rinse and drain it. Put it in a Ziploc, a gallon size Ziploc bag and put it in your cooler. Rinse and drain, get all of your other ingredients ready and done, put them in Ziploc bags, take them with you. And when you get to the park, you can throw the rest of this together in a matter of just two or three minutes, I promise you. And everybody loves to see a salad put together fresh in front of them. It just makes them know what's in it and they're just excited for it. And I guarantee you, this will be the first dish that's gone. Peggy says, I like mozzarella in my pasta salad. I just cut it up with some um, cheese sticks into the salad. Oh yes, I make a uh, pepperoni pasta salad um, that uses mozzarella pearls, the little pearls, but it's really easy to just use the string cheese and to slice those up and throw them in, super easy. Um, Doreen, um, are these green beans? No, 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 these are like black beans, kidney beans, pinto beans in the can. Not green beans, um, but the other kind. Um, Peggy says it's so easy in the Instant Pot, you don't have to watch it. And that's correct. When, whenever you're cooking something in the Instant Pot, it allows you to clean up your workspace or set the dinner table or start a load of wash or sit down and put your feet up. As a busy mom, let me tell you, I don't get to do it enough. And it's heaven sent when I do. So, kind of fun that way. All right, this is over here doing its thing. So we're just letting it do its thing. And I know I've missed some questions. So I'm gonna scroll back up, see who I've missed. Hi, Chris, how are you? Kathy says, this salad is so good. It really is. Karen says, hey, hey, just finished your sloppy joe recipe, letting it boil out the extra. Um, I hope I made enough for our family. It's so good. Oh, it's so good. I'm so glad. You guys are fantastic. All right, if you're new here, will you please chime in and say hello? Let us know that you're new. I'm Rebecca, and I'm excited to have all the new people come 
and all of the regulars here. This is a safe place to ask your questions about Instant Pot and pressure cooking. I'm here to help you through the scary moments of what you're doing or what went wrong. Um, and it's, I love my pressure cooker. We use it so often. And it's funny as my boys have moved out and moved into apartments of their own, the one thing that they want is their own pressure cooker, which is pretty cute, I think. Okay, Dar's question in, does it take the same amount of time if using whole wheat pasta? Great question. Whole wheat pasta tends to take a little bit longer, as does gluten-free pasta. So there is no general rule of thumb, which can be difficult. So it's kind of a trial and error because even different brands of regular pasta will cook a little bit differently. What I would suggest if you're cooking a pound of whole wheat pasta, again, make sure that that pasta is good and covered with liquid. So it has enough liquid to absorb because that will help the cooking process. I would add a minute, maybe two, two minutes. It's really just going to depend. Um, and gluten-free pasta is the same way. You need to add some extra time. So if, you, if you're a family that loves whole wheat pasta or gluten-free pasta, the first time you do something, look at how much longer it's taking you, the extra minute you add or the two minutes that you add, and see how your pasta turns out. Worst case scenario, you might need to add a little bit more liquid, close that lid, turn it back on for an extra minute and see what happens, okay? Try it out and then make a mental note next time when you're cooking another recipe from somebody and it gives you a time allotment that you know your pasta takes an extra minute or two so that it's perfect for your family. Perfect, hello Trelva. You guys are so fun, so fun, okay please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to Devour Dinner on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever you're watching from. It makes a huge, huge difference. I see lots of you on there today and I'm super excited, but give me some love. Let's get those hearts going, those thumbs ups going, all the things. And if you're one of those who have donated stars in the past, big hugs from me to you. Um, the star system on Facebook is kind of a tip jar. And those tips I use to help buy the ingredients for the recipes that I do cook um, and do these live demos, which is certainly helpful and I'm super grateful for. So thank you, thank you to those of you who do the tip jar each and every week. All right, we've got lots of things going on here today. Super, super fun. I'm gonna drop that link again because I know it gets buried. Let's ask the question. Okay, next week is Father's Day. Should I go live next week on Father's Day? I want to hear in the comments. Should I go live next week on Father's Day? Um, will you be watching? Will you not be watching? What would you like to see if you want if you're going to be watching? I want to see some of those comments come up as we progress on here. You guys are quiet today. So this recipe is kind of fun because the last thing that we're going to add to this recipe are some Frito chips. Now, today I'm using the Honey Barbecue Twist chips. I like them because they give an extra little spice, not heat spice or chili spice, but just an extra little flavor into the pasta when it's all mixed together. Regular Fritos are wonderful as well, but I do like these barbecue ones. Obviously, once you add the chips and you stir it up with your sauce, you know what happens, right? They get soggy. Now they'll last about a half hour before they get soggy, maybe even 45 minutes. But after that, they're soggy. Don't mix the chips in until you're ready to eat. You can mix everything else together and throw it in the fridge. But just before you're ready to eat, put your chips in and stir those up because then you're going to have the crunch of the chip and everything else. It's just going to be golden that way. <laughs> Peggy says I can take a day off. Hi, Linda. How are you? Welcome. Cindy says I will not be watching as I will be celebrating my date. Take the holiday off. Chris says take the day off. 
Michelle says, no, enjoy the day. You guys are fantastic. I might just take the day off next week. It's always fun to be here and I love being live. Um, I love the back and forth that we get, but it's nice to have a Sunday off too. Today I've got house guests coming later today um, and I'm excited because I'll mix up a little bit with the chips here live for you at home so you can see that, but I'm saving the rest and we'll add chips to the remainder later today when my guests arrive because they're traveling in and they're gonna be hungry when they get here and it's a perfect recipe to pull out of the fridge for them. So we're gonna do that when they arrive. Peggy says, I would sprinkle chips on individual servings. Um, that way it would be better, I think, and there's no mushy chips and leftovers. Yes, it can be. It really depends on how you're serving it, right? So if you're going to a potluck, if you put the chips to the side, the chips will never get on the pasta salad because people don't understand that the chips are supposed to go in the salad, right? And so for that instance, I would definitely mix them in right before we're all ready to eat. Um, today, I'm gonna sprinkle a few on top of the serving that I eat because like I said, I'm waiting for house guests later tonight. So, <laughs> Peggy says, great minds. <laughs> you guys are great. You guys are absolutely great. All right, if you're just joining me, we are making a barbecue ranch chicken pasta salad. I know the combination sounds crazy weird, but it's a plethora of flavors that just like, it's a party in your mouth and I love it. I'm gonna go ahead and make up the rest of the sauce. So we're gonna take about a cup of sour cream. We can go top down, that'll be fun. Once we have that this week. And then we're going to use some ranch dressing and we're using the seasoning packet is what we're using. Okay, so I'm using about half is all I'm using of the packet. And we're just gonna mix that in. So it's kinda, you know, honestly, this sour cream with the ranch dip is the same if you would be using the um, wavy lace chips and the ranch dip. My son loves that. He will just sit and dip and dip and dip forever. All right, once you have that all mixed in, we're going to mix about a half of a cup of barbecue sauce. Again, choose your favorite. Now I make this enough that I really do go by sight and color when this gets all mixed up. I like it to be this nice creamy beige color. And this is thick, right? You can still see on my spoon this is thick. It doesn't just immediately fall off. Did you notice that? So make sure you're stirring from the bottom. You're getting every bit of that sour cream mixed in. All right, and that's about the color I like. So it's just a nice creamy beige. It smells really good. Sigrid says, I'm late to the party. Got busy doing chores. Welcome, Sigrid. Always good to have you here. It's okay. What are we making? Great question. You know what? I'll drop that link again because I know there are others who are just joining in too. We are making a barbecue chicken pasta salad. It's a cold pasta salad. We just made the sauce. So the sauce is a combination of sour cream with some ranch seasoning mix mixed together and then some barbecue sauce. We're gonna to add to our pasta. After our pasta is done, we're gonna rinse, rinse, rinse it in cold water. It's even best if we can rinse it and then put it in the fridge to let it chill. But then we're gonna add, see if I can get all this stuff in. There we go. We're going to add some cheese. Now I've cubed the cheese today. You can use any kind of cheese, whether you wanna use mozzarella and use cheese sticks and slice them up. 
You, this is a mild cheddar or you can use grated cheese. I typically use grated, but today I wanted to use the cubed. This is leftover chicken, so you can use rotisserie chicken, canned chicken, or even if you've grilled the night before, chop up that chicken and use that. We have some whole kernel sweet corn. I've rinsed and drained it, as well as some beans. So I'm using black beans today, but you could use kidney beans or pinto beans or a navy bean um, as well. And then we have some diced up green onion. So it's one bunch of green onion and I'm using one Roma tomato. It was a fairly big Roma tomato. Um, and if you want more of the ingredients because your family likes it, then add more. Do what your family likes. If your family doesn't like beans then don't put beans in it, it's okay. I promise, totally okay. And then finally, we're gonna add some Frito chips. Now I mentioned earlier, I am using the Honey Barbecue Twisted Chips, which are super cute. Uh-oh, are we still live? We may not be live. Okay, can somebody tell me, are we live? Does somebody still hear me? Okay, I'm getting a thumbs up. The computer just went wonky, so I wasn't sure. Um, where are we at? There we go. Okay, these are the twisted chips. See what they look like? I can bring them up closer. So they're super cute and they're twisty. Okay, that panicked me, you guys, I'm not gonna lie. My computer just like glitched and these other pop-ups came in, which usually means we've been disconnected. So I'm glad we're still live. <laughs> you guys are great. Trisha says, I love your apron, how cute. Isn't it fun? Look, look at the fun pockets. I think it's great. Um, I found it, I was cleaning and I found it in a box. I used to wear this all the time. Um, and I love it because it's just kind of sassy and cute and feminine and fun. And I found it a couple of weeks ago, months ago, two or three months ago, washed it up and I've used it in the rotation here when I do these lives. Sigrid said, oh yes, top down is working. I know, I don't know what happened last week with the top down. Um, I really don't, but it's really nice that it'll just focus right in and get what we need. All right, our pasta is doing its thing. We have one minute left on our pasta. Now with pasta, we do need to allow for a natural pressure release. We're gonna let it naturally release for about four to five minutes before we open up the pressure valve and let the rest of the steam come out. This, the, the natural pressure release is something that you can also watch and adjust based upon how well done you like your pasta. Some people like their pasta a little bit chewier. Some like it way soft that it just breaks apart. We're not gonna discuss which is better, doesn't matter. But if you want it, more on the al dente side, do about a four minute natural pressure release before releasing the rest of the pressure. Because the longer the pasta sits under the pressure, the more cooked it's going to get. Now we allow the natural pressure release because in our pot, okay, think of a pot on the stove. We've got our pasta and our water and it's boiled up with all the starches. So it's all bubbly. If I open that pressure valve up right now, all of that starch is gonna go flying all over my kitchen. <laughs> no, thank you. I don't want that. So we're gonna let that natural pressure release happen and what happens inside of the pressure cooker is that those natural starches settle down a little bit. Then we'll open the pressure, we'll let some steam out. If by chance, some of those starches start spitting out of the top, you can close it. That's what's called a uh, controlled pressure release. Give it another 30 seconds to a minute and open it back up. Super, super simple. Yeah, the al dente, Sigrid's saying, is al dente the same as chewy? Yes. So we want it just, some people like their pasta not as cooked as others. So we call that al dente. Peggy says, I always make Italian pasta salad. This sounds really delicious. I'll have to try it for sure. Peggy, I hope you do. And in fact, any of you who are gonna make this pasta this week or make it next Sunday for Father's Day, please, please, please go back to my site and leave a comment with a star rating. 
I cannot tell you how helpful that is. And I'm gonna actually, here's a plead, I'm pleading to you right now. On my other website, and I'm gonna drop the link. My other website is my cookie website. You guys know about it. I have two separate websites. On my cookie website, if you have made any of those cookie recipes, will you please do me a favor? Go and leave a comment and leave a star rating. Because that site is still so young and such a baby, it doesn't have the comments on it like Devour Dinner does. And it makes such a difference for Google and the searching for Google and the algorithms and all the things. So you would help me out so much if you've made any of those cookies, even in the last year, to go back over there and leave a comment on bestcookierecipes.com for whatever rest cookie recipe you made. Let me hear about it. Boy, does it help me. It is a simple thing that you can do and I would love it. If you've made multiple cookie recipes, leave multiple reviews on each of them. I would, I would love it. Hi, Amy, how are you? Amy says, what's for dinner? I love it. Amy, we are making a cold pasta salad um, and it is delicious, delicious. So in the pasta salad is chicken and let me get that link again. I know some of you ordered the super cubes that we talked about last week. Did you get them yet? I hope so. Okay, I just dropped the link to the barbecue chicken pasta salad that we are making. We've cooked our pasta in the Instant Pot. The natural pressure release has now gone on for three minutes. So we're gonna open it up, the pressure valve, here in just a moment, and let that pressure shoot to the ceiling. Again, please remember, move your pressure cooker away from your cabinets and away from your overhanging lights. You'll notice my pressure cooker is over here to the side. That's because I've got cameras and lighting and microphones and all that kind of stuff that I don't want this steam hitting and ruining, obviously. So we're gonna release that pressure and then I want you to rinse the pasta under cold water. Rinse and rinse and rinse. Stir it around, get it good and cold and drain it well. Shake it off. You can also then put it in your fridge for I don't know, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours. You could even make it the night before if that's what you wanted to do. Okay, we're gonna open this up. That steam goes shooting up. We're just gonna let it do its thing. Now, if it starts to spit out any of that starch that's inside, all we're gonna do is close the pressure valve. It's that simple. You can open and close that pressure valve as many times as you need. So we're gonna let it do its thing. Amy, this is a great pasta salad. I love making it. Oh, all right. Did you see that? Started spitting at me. So we're gonna let it sit for 30 seconds to a minute. Let the starches inside settle because that's what's spitting out. The reason why the starches have come up close to the top is because, well, it's starch from the pasta makes a big difference. I actually find that when you cook pasta with water versus chicken broth, the water tends to have more starch in it than when cooking with chicken broth. I don't know why that even is. I don't know, but that's what I've just noticed. So now that we've let that settle for just a moment, we can open it back up and let more of that pressure out. If it starts spitting at us again, which it is, we're just gonna close it and let that settle again. This is pretty common when it comes to just pasta, especially since we've added a lot more liquid than if we're doing a one pot meal. Remember with a one pot meal that we're not rinsing and draining, we've measured out that water to begin with. So we have the perfect amount of water for what we need. And in this case, I just dumped water and made sure that pasta was fully covered, which means it's higher in our, in our pressure cooker. So, Man, this is like having a heyday today. We're just gonna wipe some of that off. Okay, what other questions do we have? Uh-oh, somebody gave me a frowny face. Listen, people, no frowny faces today. Okay, based upon, based upon your comments, we will not be live next Sunday for Father's Day. I'm gonna take the day off. I want you to spend the time with family. 
that's what we're going to do. Let's hope the rest of this can drain so we can get this off camera doing its thing. We can mix all this up. Because I'm hungry. Who's hungry? These are like super addicting. If you've never tried these um, honey barbecue twists, they're fantastic. Like, love, love them. Um, my dad loves Frito chips. He's old school. Loves the Frito chips. I think these are pretty good. They're really fun. So Sigrid says, Sigrid says, I've made it and took it to a party and it was a hit, exclamation point. That's what I love to hear. Love to hear that. Teresa, hello from Utah. Welcome. Amy says, the, the pasta is, is just excited for the finished result. Yes. Okay, that's funny. It truly is. All right, Sigrid's asking, where in Utah, Teresa? Salt Lake Valley, Southern Utah. Utah is pretty. I was there a couple of weeks ago. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. All right, this is still going. Do you guys, how many of you, I know Amy can raise her hand to this one and she knows what I'm gonna say. How many of you have watched me for so many years that you watched one of the first Facebook Lives that the pressure cooker just kept releasing forever and ever and ever and ever. How many of you have been around that long? That was an embarrassing live. It was hilarious. Yvonne, hello, welcome. Yvonne says, hi, from Nevada. Um, I love watching you. I love that. Yvonne, welcome. Lori, hello from 108 Mile Ranch, British Columbia. Teresa says from the Salt Lake City area. <laughs> Karen says, I have. Okay, that was a really funny moment. It was really embarrassing. I can't even tell you. Kind of makes me giggle now. Kathy raises her hand. Sigrid raises their hand. I can't tell you. It's honestly... It's fun that so many of you have followed me for this long, this many years. Um, it's super humbling and it, it really makes my heart smile. I can't even tell you. It makes my heart smile. Okay. It just dropped. I'm going to get this lit up. We're going to get it out of the way. Now, you know, this little thing right here will sit so you can drain all the condensation in. That's a little tip. If you're new to pressure cooking, um, keep that in mind. Okay, I'm gonna pass this off. This is hot. Make sure you use like silicone hot pads or whatever, and then you're gonna drain it, rinse it in cold over and over and stir it around. We need this pasta cold. Hold on. All right. We're gonna put this away. Put this off to the side. Now, I just got you know, this is like a picnic bowl. They're not very pretty, but you guys all have them. I know you do. And I'm going to just start mixing up some of these ingredients while we wait for that pasta to cool because it's going to take a minute. We're going to go side by side. We're going to get this into play. Now, you know me, right? I never put it all in at first. And some of you at home are saying, well, why not? Because this is a recipe you make with love. And when you make a recipe with love, you add a little bit more or a little less depending upon your mood for the day. It's like making chocolate chip cookies. You can always add a little more chocolate chips, right? So just like with that, I like to put in most of the ingredients and I like to toss it up. I like to see what I have. We're gonna wait to add the sauce in. I'm just going to mix this up. Now, I like to wait on the tomatoes. Does anybody know why? Why didn't I put the tomatoes in? <laughs> Peggy says, I think we all do, meaning we like to cook with love. We like to just put a little bit. We like to eyeball it. 
Oh my gosh, Kathy, I just want to hug you. Kathy says, each Sunday of your live, I tell my husband, I have a cooking show at five o'clock, so if you need anything, ask before then. Okay, I just want to hug you, seriously. You make my heart smile. Thank you so much. Amy's, Amy's answering my question, why didn't I add the tomatoes? And she says, the acidity. That's one reason. Dar, that's the other reason. Dar says they will break up. Yes. So the tomatoes, tomatoes are fragile, right? I still need to stir in all of the sauce with the pasta. These other ingredients are hearty. They can handle a lot of stirring, but the tomatoes can't and they get all broken up. So because of that, I like to add them after I've gotten everything together so that when I finally do add those tomatoes, I'm not getting all those juices broken out to thin out my pasta dish or thin out the sauce and that they stay nice and they stay whole. So both of those answers are spot on. Oh, Kathy says hugs right back. Kathy, you're right. Kathy says um, that the tomatoes get runny. <laughs> Karen says, I like to eat with a lot of love. Oh my gosh, seriously, a lot of love. Are those ready? Okay. I'm gonna go grab the pasta and we're gonna start adding it together. All right, we see what's going on there? Those are good. So these are cold now. We're gonna stir all this up. Look at all that beautiful color. Doesn't that look wonderful? I love, like at potlucks, I could go for the sides and just eat the side dishes. Like that's my jam. Okay, now we're gonna add some of this sauce in. I'm gonna mix this up. I really do think that the tomatoes give a beautiful pop of color. I also think that the cheese, the cube cheese, gives some color and texture in it as well that I quite am liking today. Oh, that's just perfect. We're gonna add a little bit more sauce. Okay. Here's my other trick. You ready? I still have more sauce there. Remember, I didn't make the full box of pasta. I left, can you see that? Like there's not a lot, you can still see the bottom. It's like a little over a half a cup, two thirds cup of pasta that I didn't cook. But this extra sauce, save it. Right now, save it because if you don't eat this all in one sitting, because this makes a lot and you can cut the recipe in half if you need to, when you pull it back out of the fridge, the pasta absorbs the sauce and it tends to be dry. Add this to it. So like tomorrow, later tonight, whatever. You're going to want that sauce, trust me. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in some tomatoes. Now, I am scooping the tomatoes in because there's some of the tomato juices on the bottom and I don't want those at all. Stir that up. And I do like to add, once I put this in a bowl, I like to add it on top because everybody walks by and sees the presentation. So watch what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this in a bowl. I know some of you at home are saying you haven't added the chips yet. You're right, you're right. I haven't, but remember, I don't wanna add chips to this whole bowl because I've got house guests coming in a couple of hours. And when they arrive, this will be a nice, fun little dish to let them enjoy. There we go. Let's get this back out here. 
I find you guys can see this easier on camera if I get something under it. All right, so now it's fun to add some of this on top, right? We're gonna add a few of these tomatoes because I want that pop of color. Right? See how much that changed? And we eat visually first. It's just what we do. So you want to see colors and textures and, and all of the fun things. You can add a little bit of corn into it as well in places. But look at how much brighter fun. I'm adding some more green onions on top. Look at that. Tell me that's not beautiful. Of course, this batch doesn't have any of the chips. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add chips to this over here. And then I'm gonna plate this one up. So I'm just stirring the chips in because we do want the sauce to get on the chips because it's fun. And then, let me take this plate. All right, we'll get that off camera. We're gonna clean up some of this mess. I'm gonna grab a fork. We're gonna pull this up top here. Look at that. See how much fun the texture that is added by having these chips in place? And see, we haven't even added anything extra, like a few extra pieces of cheese or some pops of color from the tomato. Right? Look at, the, look at the difference. Super fun, right? Okay, I'm gonna dive in. Make sure with each bite you get some pasta and some chips and some cheese and all of the yummy things. Mm, 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 this is my happy dance. I am in heaven. The chicken in this sauce is so good. So good. I'm telling you, I could eat this all day. All right. What questions do you guys have? There you go. Super fun. What questions do you have? Amy says, mm, pardon my drool. Amy, I will pardon your drool because this is a winner recipe. You can season it up with some additional salt and pepper. It doesn't need a ton. You can add pepper. I think some fresh cra cracked pepper would be heaven on this, um, but it doesn't need a lot. Super fun recipe, super easy to make, especially since you can do a large portion of it even the night before, and then you can throw it all together the day of. We all know how barbecues and potlucks get. You're busy, busy, busy. So that's why I wanted to show you this. We are hitting into barbecue season with family reunions, with neighborhood potlucks, with maybe it's your sporting events. My sons used to play baseball and we would do big picnic things after these big tournament games. These are the kind of recipes that you want to have in your back pocket. They're different, they're unique, and they're wonderful. People love them. Karen says, I haven't made any of them, but I will. I'm not seeing Amy's comments. Amy is around here. We appreciate Amy and her team. They come, Amy is from the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners group, so big shout out to them. If you are watching from that group, big hugs. We're thrilled to have you here. I'm Rebecca from Devour Dinner. Amy is the admin over there. Her team of moderators comes over and helps as well, and it is so appreciated. So one more big shout out to Amy from the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners group. Big hugs. If you have shared this Facebook Live onto your timeline or into a group, big hugs. That helps me so much. Those of you who are gonna take the time to go back to my recipes, 
whether on Devour Dinner or my sister site, which is bestcookierecipes.com, and leave a comment with a star rating on a recipe that you've made, that will help me so much. That would be the best gift that you could give me. Um, it is so, so, so helpful. So thank you in advance for that. Hey, there's a heart from Amy. She's here. I told you she was here. Um, oh, Dar's asking, have you tried using yogurt instead of sour cream for the calorie reduction? Yes, you can. Use plain yogurt. You can use like a Greek yogurt. Do that. You can reduce the calories. You could use light sour cream. That works too. Sigrid, yes, you can substitute that Greek plain yogurt for sour cream in most any recipes. It works great. Everybody says that looks delish. Happy foodie dance. We love the happy foodie dance. Amy, you're my new best friend over there on, on YouTube. I so appreciate it. My YouTube channel, I am like 18 subscribers away from hitting a thousand over there. Woohoo! So tiny and small. Um, but it's been fun to dual broadcast over to Facebook as well. All right, if you're still here, please give this video a thumbs up. Give it a heart, give it some love. Um, I so appreciate you all. And again, here is this chicken barbecue pasta salad. I hope you'll make it, dive in. My guests are gonna be thrilled with it when they arrive. I just know they will be. I am excited. All right, we'll go live screen. All right, what else? Anything else that I can help you guys with before we shut off, peace out for the next while? Those of you who are still here are my like hardcore followers. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you guys something? If you're sticking around this long, you want the goods. I, I have something I wanna share, but it's not recipe related. So tell me in the comments if I should share this or not. Peggy, you're welcome. Peggy says, thanks for another great recipe, Rebecca. I'm going to give this one a try. Dar says, thank you. Amy, who's over on YouTube watching, a different Amy, says there are so many amazing Amys in the world. And that's true. There really are. Sigrid says, have a great week. Sigrid says, wait, spill the tea. Amy says, yes. Karen says, yes. Kathy says, share. Oh, now my feed blows up. Uh-huh. I see how it is. Michelle says, is it CSE? Listen, I talk a lot about CSE. And if you don't know what CSE is, it's my... Uh, clean simple eats protein that I have not really no I'm not going to talk about it um, Karen says yes please share Amy Amy says Rebecca we're practically family since we both are aunties to amazing kids you know what it's true it is totally true okay so this is what I have to share if you're still here this isn't food related this is me personally but I'm like so thrilled with this so you guys know a year ago January January 20. 22, I started eating healthy. I wanted a better relationship with food, right? I'm not dieting, you guys know that. We're 18 months later. Now to be fair, you guys haven't heard this part of the story. I lost all of my weight in the first six months just by changing the way I approached food. Six months. So that means June of last year one year ago. Okay, do you grasp all that? So one year later, I've kept the weight off. Now, those of you who have dieted, you know how big of a deal that is. To lose weight is hard, it's hard, hard. But to keep it all off a year later is crazy hard too. Now, of course, my scale has done this, right? That's normal. But at the end of the day, one year later, I still weigh within two or three pounds of where I was last June. But here's the really cool part. You ready for this one? My inches are so much smaller than a year ago. So much smaller than a year ago. It's taken my body a long time to let go of some of the inches. So although I may not be losing weight, my body is still changing and adjusting every single week and every single month. And that makes me so proud of all the hard work that I've done. What it also tells me is to share it because weight, 
your weight is such a personal private journey. It's hard. It's difficult. And we've all seen on social media, these people who take a magic gummy something and lose a bunch of weight or who knows what, right? And they magically are this little teeny tiny athletic person. And that's not reality. Yeah, I wish it was, but I, but I've never seen, I've never had that experience. So those of you who have been watching me for years and years, you've seen me bigger. You watched me lose weight and you all were like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And it took me a long time to finally share. So I'm just tooting my own little horn because I'm so proud of myself that one year later, I've kept the weight off. I've kept it off. But guess what? I eat stuff like this and I eat cookies and I eat all of the things. I just do it in moderation. That's the only thing. I do it in moderation. I've learned what foods make my body feel good and give me energy. And I eat those things first. And then I enjoy other stuff too. And you can too. Stick around. I'll keep sharing my tips and tricks. And of course, one of the things that I have not wavered from is I do drink a protein shake from Clean Simple Eats every single day. It fills me up. It curbs my appetite. And it has been a huge key factor in me losing weight. So you guys know my Clean Simple Eats. Oh, Sigrid, I've lost 15 pounds since December and you're in your 50s and it's so hard. Oh. Okay, you guys know I'm in my 50s. 15 pounds is fantastic. Good job. Peggy says, I can see a big difference, Rebecca. I have your posts pop up in my memories and you've done an amazing job. Okay, those posts, they're killing me. They're popping up all over the place and I'm just dying. It's so funny. Yvonne says, I am new here. Welcome, Yvonne. Welcome, welcome. This is a great place. We do instant pot recipes, air fryer recipes almost every week. We will not be live next week. And right now we're just having some fun. Michelle says, good for you. Amy gives claps. Karen says, awesome. Kathy says, congratulations. Sigrid says, congrats. Keep it up. Dar says, wow, that's amazing. Karen says, terrific. You look great. Peggy says, woohoo. Spooky says, waving hand. Amy, Amy from the Instant Pot 101 for Beginner says, I agree with Amy, the Amy that's over on YouTube right now. You guys are fantastic. Okay, that's all I had to share. It was my own little horn tooting to let you know that I am as real as all of you at home. And it's not always easy, but it works. And for me, this, this learning how to have a better relationship with food is not a diet but it's learning how to have a better relationship with food and not letting food control what I eat, but learning and recognizing how food makes me feel when I eat it, because that has been the mind shift of what does my body need? If I start to get a headache, I just ask myself, wait, what does my body need? Maybe it needs more liquids or electrolyte. Maybe I need more protein. Maybe I need something else. And I'm able to solve that headache or whatever naturally. And it's been really fun. All right, I wanna dive into the rest of this and I'm not gonna eat in front of you. So we're gonna call it good for the day. We've been here almost an hour. So thank you for joining me. Make this, leave some comments. I'll be back in two weeks. So not this uh, Sunday, the following Sunday, I think it's the 30th. I don't know what date it is. I have no idea. The 25th, I will be back on the 25th of June. Mark your calendars, put it in your phone, set a reminder. We'll be back with another great recipe. In the meantime, celebrate the men in your life. Celebrate those men who have raised children of their own. Um, maybe they have helped raise um, stepchildren or foster children or any child that they have loved, honestly. Um, we need all of these men in these kids' lives, whether they're coaches or teachers or mentors or neighbors or extra grandparents. We need them in our children's lives to help foster and love them to grow up in this crazy world that we live in. So celebrate those men. Big hugs from me to you. I'll be back in two weeks. Take care. Remember, be kind, everybody. Big hearts. See you later. Bye.